Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to face judgment day. Going up to God and saying, God, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And he's going to say, well, where did I say that? Well, I was reading in Isaiah 53, and it talks about the suffering servant and how he was bruised for our iniquities and he was crushed for our sins and did it say that I said that about Jesus did I put Jesus in there no so what are you talking about come to judgment day like that I want to make sure I have a scripture and verse where God is saying that now that's right I want to have scripture and verse welcome greetings we are having a special tonight I will be going over in detail how Jesus didn't die for your sins and I know you are so excited about that let me tell you, Moses is the man. Moses, his record is against human sacrifice. The spiritual IQ of the average person is very low. It's very low. Some of the best preachers and all of the Billy Grahams, their spiritual IQ is very low because they have failed to crack the code and decode the Bible, especially going into the death of Jesus Christ. They haven't yet, as of now, decoded that. As well as the Israelite camps. They haven't either. Now, I make no difference between Israelite camps and Christians because they both hold to the same core values. And that is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Many other things they are in agreement with the Christians with as well. But I want to show you where I was at yesterday. I was in Isaiah chapter 6, and I was in verse 5. And I'm going to go over that because yesterday I got off and I got excited, and now I'm back on track. But keep in mind, man's goings isn't of himself. A man's goings is of the Lord. Now, this is Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now, this is a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger. One thing that stands out is the monotheism. Isaiah, I would like to say, is the book that God says he is God. Okay, that's why I say Isaiah. This is the book where God says, I say I'm God. Okay, he is God and there is none else. Isaiah is that book that drives it home and it brings the monotheistic characteristics of the one and true religion, Islam. Now, notice he said, I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So he's confessing he's unclean. He's confessing he's a Gentile. Now, Isaiah 6.6, 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Now, a coal is like a burning rock. Oh, yeah, you know where I'm going. Verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Now, I've heard many so-called bishop deacons talk about Islam. They talk about them bad. And they always talk about that stone they kiss. Now, I am one to observe 
And I like to know what I'm talking about. And I don't like to speak against stuff I don't have any knowledge of. And I seen them kissing that rock, but I never once spoke ill about them. And I'm glad that God opened up my eyes that I didn't say nothing ill about that when I seen them kissing that rock. Now, that rock they kiss is to believe to have come from heaven. And Adam had it, and that's how Adam removed his sin. And that stone was once white, but because of absorbing all of the people's sins, it became black. Now, that is the basic belief about the Kaaba stone. Now, I want to keep going, and I want to go back over something that was probably missed in verse 7. Lo, this have touched thy lips, and thine iniquity, now iniquity is sin, is taken away, and thy sin is purged. So Isaiah's sin was removed, not by someone hanging on a tree or a cross, this man's sin was taken away by kissing this coal or kissing this rock. That's why you need to watch your mouth. You need to watch your mouth and don't speak against things you don't have any knowledge. Now, in these Israelite camps, they are teaching brothers in the precept package to say that Islam is garbage. Now, that is highly dangerous, especially when us Muslims, we believe that the comforter, okay, is the prophet Muhammad. Now, think about the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. God said that every word he spoke was like a revelation from God. Now you get it why we believe that is going into the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Some believe it's going into the angel Gabriel, who told him to read in the name of the Lord three times. And he could not read, and he actually quoted the Quran, okay? And that's how the revelation came to him while he was in a rock. He was in a cave. So this is something you should pay close attention to. Why was this man's sin taken away by kissing a rock. Ask your bishop that. Ask your pastor that. Let's see what they got to say about that because I've already broken this down because someone tried to throw a blow at me talking about I'm kissing a rock and I gave them this scripture and I told them to explain that and they said nothing else about that. All right? Now I want to go into verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I sit and who will go for us? Then said, here am I, send me. That is a popular saying amongst believers. Verse nine, and he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now, many people get in the comments and they cherry pick the Quran because they don't have enough brains, okay, and understanding to just read it and study it, but they cherry pick. And one of the scriptures they love to cherry pick is the scripture that says Allah is the greatest planners, the greatest schemers, but they love to bring out the translation where it says Allah is the greatest of deceivers, okay? Now, pay attention to verse 10 with that in mind. He's telling Isaiah in verse 10, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. Hold up. He is telling Isaiah to deceive the people. God is telling Isaiah the prophet to do war without bloodshed. And that is making the ears of the people fat. Now, throughout my lifetime in Christianity, my whole life as a Christian, I was nothing more than an assassin. 
Because look where I'm at now. I'm at home in Islam. So just like Paul has been killing the church with the cross, killing the church with the crosses, that's what I've been doing. Okay? God wants to mislead people. Remember the story of Micaiah and Ahab and Jehoshaphat. And Ahab did not want to go to Micaiah because Micaiah was that real prophet that always had bad news for Ahab. Okay? And when Ahab sought him, he was like, oh, yeah, you'll prosper. All is well. He played with him a little bit, just like I play with y'all. Okay? And I taunt y'all. I taunt y'all all the time. I tell you, dig in that Bible. Surely you can find the scripture where it says God is going to send Jesus to die for your sins. Dig a little deeper, okay? Elijah was a prophet like that too, okay? He would taunt the church of his day, okay? Those that have went astray, he would taunt them, the false prophets. And so Ahab says, see, I want you to tell me the truth. I'm paraphrasing. And he said, I seen all of Israel scattered like sheep that don't have a shepherd. Wow. He basically just said, look, the king is going to die. Ain't no king. Ain't no king. That's what he told him. Okay. He had bad news. Okay. And just like spies were sent off. Okay. We are sent off like assassins. And God does deceive the nations. He does that. And if you read in the Quran, he literally asks the disciples, okay, who will be with him. And a lot of people do not get this. And I'm going to bring that up for you. This is going to be Quran 6114. Oh, you who have believed, be supporters of Allah. As when Jesus, the son of Mary, said to the disciples, who are my supporters for Allah? The disciples said, we are supporters of Allah. And a faction of the children of Israel believed and a faction disbelieved. So we supported those who believed against their enemy and they became dominant. See, God has a people, okay, that is going to be assassins, okay? He told Isaiah, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Now, amazingly, this is the same book where the famous chapter, Isaiah 53, is contained, okay? And it is talking about the servant of Israel, but the nations have taken it to the death of Jesus. And the nations has believed it to be the death of Jesus on the cross. Now, who is to say that God didn't use Isaiah, okay, to make your ears fat, okay, to make your ears heavy? How you know God didn't want to mislead you? God is the greatest of deceivers. He can deceive you when you think you deceive in him. Okay? So you better watch your mouth when you try to pull out that scripture, Allah is the greatest deceivers, because he will deceive you because you think you deceive in him. And surely he is the best of all schemers. So he's telling Isaiah, he's giving him a ministry to mislead people. Okay, and I want to take you to a precept so you will know I'm not making this up. This is no island scripture. This is going to be Psalms 69 verse 22. Let their table become a snare before them and that which should have been for their welfare. Let it become a trap. Now, Israelite camps interpret the word table as the Bible. And I agree with that. Okay, because the first set of teachings were put on tablets okay coming from the most high he said let their table or let their bible become a snare let me tell you something your bible is a trap your bible is a snare okay and the teachings of paul is the mousetrap for you christians 
It says, let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, their Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth is what you think. Yeah, that same thing is going to be a trap. God loves to trap people this way. He loves to do war without bloodshed. Verse 23, let their eyes be darkened. So Isaiah was given a mantle to mislead people. To make their ears heavy, to make their eyes darken, that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Verse 24, pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Verse 25, let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. Verse 26, for they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Verse 27, add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. There's a mantle down here to mislead folks who are not really believers. God has a mantle to mislead those who aren't really his. Okay, God is all wise. Now, amazingly, your boy Paul, he says the same thing in Romans 11, 9. And he quotes David's passage. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may see not and bow down their back always. God loves sending assassins on a mission. He rose up a man in Judges chapter 13 by the name of Samson. The man that came on the scene and took that Judah lion and tore it apart and got honey out of it. He tore it apart with his bare hands. This is a picture of the Gentile messenger. Okay, and the only reason he was born was to kill the Philistines. I'm here to tell you that the Israelite has been supplanted and now he is the Philistine. God wanted him to kill Philistines. That was his purpose. And so he deceived them when he was putting on his show. After they captured him, played him, took his eyes out, he put his hands on the pillars on the left and on the right. And he killed more Philistines in his death than his entire life. He played them. Okay. And if you put your hands to the right and you put your hands to the left, what have you made? You have made a cross. Samson was an assassin. Paul was an assassin. Okay. Many of you are assassins. You have pages of Christianity that you can't even delete. You in a whole nother religion. You in the nation of Islam now. And you are still misleading people. Sometimes you want to try to go back and you want to erase it. But you can't. It's permanent out there. And let me tell you something. For those that don't belong to God, God is going to blind you. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Let me read it again. Romans 11, 9. And David said, let their table, let their Bible be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Verse 10. Let their eyes be darkened. God said that he wants to blind you. And remember what Jesus said. He said, for this purpose, I was born to make those who see become blind and those who are blind to see there's a mental out here to mislead and it's in the book it's in the book now going back to what I was talking about early I did a couple shorts and I was asking the Christians to show me a scripture in the entire Bible I even put the New Testament on the table. Okay, excluding the Apocrypha because Christians 
don't respect the Apocrypha, okay? They don't consider it canon from the Protestants, okay? So I even put the New Testament on the table, and I want you to show me a scripture where it says, thus saith the Lord. I'm going to send Jesus or the Messiah, and he's going to die for your sins. There's not one scripture in the entire Bible like that. Every time somebody mentioned Jesus being crucified, it was a man, and he did not put, thus saith the Lord, okay? Although Christians will run to Timothy and say, well, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Did that say, thus saith the Lord? All inspiration is given by God? No, that was a man who wrote it. What is significant about Moses? What is significant about Samuel? What is significant about them? Nothing to y'all. Y'all don't respect these prophets. Y'all don't respect these messengers. No, y'all don't. Because Samuel, the Bible says, not one of his words touched the ground. Not one of them touched the ground. So that tells you he has truer prophecy than Paul. He has truer prophecy than a lot of the prophets. And Moses, he only spoke of three great prophets. In Deuteronomy 33, verse 2, he spoke of Moses himself, okay? And it was God, actually. It was actually God. He was under a prophetic spirit. He was under the prophetic anointing. And I'm going to get that for you. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. I just love Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai. That is speaking about Moses. And he rose up from Seir. So he skipped past all them prophets. He went from a time when Israel wasn't even in captivity and he went all the way past the Assyrian, past the Babylonian, past the Persian, me, Greco-Roman. And he went to the Roman Empire and he's talking about Jesus because remember, Judah is right next to Seir, okay? And we know that Jesus' ministry began on the mountainside, okay? of Sierra. So he's speaking already about Moses. Then he skipped past everybody and now he's talking about Jesus. Notice he's only speaking briefly of them. And then it says he shined forth from Mount Paran. So this is after Jesus. This is after Jesus. And no, this ain't your boy Paul. Because your boy Paul tried to be the Shiloh. We'll talk about that another time. He tried to be the Shiloh. It didn't work, okay? This is speaking of a Pacific messenger, okay, who would come from Paran, Arabia, in that area. And this man will come with 10,000 saints. Now, if we look at history, 629 December, yeah, CE, Prophet Muhammad, he entered into Mecca with 10,000 Muslims exactly. And from his right hand went a fiery law. A fiery law. He was given the Quran. And every word he spoke was by the revelation of God. Okay. And with that same right hand. Okay. He pointed to the moon. And it split. It. And with that same right hand. He put them back to Y'all need to wake up. Y'all need to wake up. So, yes, you do not have any scripture coming from Moses speaking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's why there's a song in the book of Revelation. Oh, I got to get the song of Moses. Let me tell you something. Moses is the man. Moses was spoken of in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. Okay? Jesus, peace be upon him, he's Messiah, but God has a lot of great prophets. And Moses was that prophet that's spoken of in the beginning by name. Jesus is not mentioned by name, nowhere in the Old Testament. 
Not one time is Jesus mentioned by name in the entire Old Testament. There is no thus saith the Lord Jesus nowhere in the entire Bible. Nowhere. Okay. Now we got to respect Moses. Okay. And I'm going to go to the song of Moses. And this is in the book of Revelation. And this is going to be Revelation 15, 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Why is Moses mentioned in the book of Revelation? And in the book of Moses, it says nothing about Jesus being crucified. I tell you why. I tell you why. Because Moses, he was a true prophet. And if you study his last words in chapter 32, he came against human sacrifice. He came against human sacrifice. And I'm going to get there for you. This is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. They sacrifice unto devils. Anytime you are putting sacrifice before obedience, you are sacrificing to the devil, okay? The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And Samuel, the prophet, the seer, whom God never let one word touch the ground, he is the one who told us that obedience is better than sacrifice. Jeremiah told us in chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 to be exact, that he did not pull the children of Israel out of Egypt to offer sacrifices, but to obey God. Obedience is the key. If there's obedience, there's no need for no sacrifice. Okay? And the teachings of Paul has literally crippled this nation to the point that nobody believes they can obey God. There were many people who obeyed God before even Moses came on the scene. This is verse 17 again. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, that rose from the dead, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. And has forgotten the God that formed you. And Christians, they forgot God. Anytime you talk to a Christian, it's Jesus, 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 Jesus. They say nothing about the Father. And they're so blind, they don't even know that they're worshiping the creature more than the creator. They have more respect for the book of John who was not an eyewitness, and he is not even the Apostle John. This is a fictitious name that was made for the book of John. We don't have his last name. The author is unknown of Mark, of Luke, and Matthew. All those authors are unknown. But people got more respect for the book of John than they do for the entire Old Testament. The Old Testament, it don't matter. I'm asking these people, show me one scripture where God said Jesus is going to die for your sins exactly like that. And they go into Isaiah, they go into John, they go into Romans. Instead of just telling the truth and confessing, they're being liars. The Bible says, do not lie or bear false witness. Why don't you just be truthful? Jesus died for your sins, supposedly. Why don't you just be truthful and say, you know what? You're right. There ain't no scripture in the Bible where God says, thus saith the Lord. God is going to send his son, supposedly. Okay? And when we say son, we say chosen because we know that there are many sons of God. The sons of Adam. Okay? David was called the son of God. Isaiah was called a son. So, we know for a fact there's no scripture like that. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Stop being a liar. Stop giving false hope. You don't want to admit that. 
Because once you admit that, your whole foundation you standing on right now is going to crumble. Because to tell you the truth, the Christian don't have two legs to stand on. If you ain't got nothing from the book of Moses talking about Jesus being crucified, and you got your boy Paul talking about it in every chapter, and you ain't got no scripture, you looking in the shadows, you trying to make similitudes, Bible interpretation and actual scripture is two different things. You don't have no legs to stand on. And that's why you don't want to admit it. But I know. I know what I'm talking about. And I've been studying this thing. Not since last year. Since I came into the knowledge of the real truth in Islam. When I think back on Christianity. And I think back on how Jesus Die for your sins, supposedly. That is the most stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I can't even reprocess it. Okay? It's sickening. God loves Jesus. God loves Jesus. God loves Jesus so much that he rescued him. He loves him so much that he rescued him. And the one time the devil told the truth is when he told Jesus, it is written of you, the angels shall bear you up with their hands, lest thy dash thy foot against a stone. Even the devils believe and tremble. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? God loves Jesus. He rescued him. Psalms 91 is the closest thing I have to Jesus' name. Because it says Yeshua, salvation, okay? But not on a man-to-man, -man, Jesus, Jesus level. Psalms 91 is the closest thing you have to Yeshua being mentioned. Because it says, I will show him my salvation. And the word salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua, okay? And God promised to rescue the man in Psalms 91. When I was a young early Christian. Young man. I had Psalms 91 memorized. And I still do. I would love to quote that all the time. It is a prayer of protection. Psalms 91 gives you complete protection. And the devil brought that up about Jesus. Even the devils believe and tremble. And I don't know what's your problem. Why can't you just deal with reality? Deal with reality. You've been lied to. You believed in the first thing that popped up and you got the zone. Deal with it. You ain't got one scripture for most. And I'm going to take you to the book of Luke. I'm going to take you to the book of Luke. This is going to be Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Where are your scriptures about Jesus dying on the cross in the book of Moses? And don't give me Genesis. Don't give me that Genesis 22 talking about Isaac. Okay? Because that has nothing to do with Jesus dying on a cross. That is a picture of Isaiah being rescued rather from the death. And they love to pull that out. And I say, oh, so Jesus was burnt? Because it don't say sacrifice. It says burnt offering. So you're saying that Jesus is the lamb that was a burnt offering? That don't make no sense. If anything, that proves my conviction. That proves my truth. Okay, that God rescued Isaac, just like God rescued Jesus. God loves Jesus. He loves all of his messengers, and he makes no difference between them. That's y'all who only got love for one of his creatures. And he's not God, and he told you his father is greater, and you still at the man's shoes. You still dribbling. You still slobbering on his kneecaps. And he's telling you God is greater than himself. He said no one is good but God. 
and you still can't get off of worshiping the creature more than the creator. And I'm going to tell you something about you people that's running around here saying Jesus is God, Jesus is God. There's not one single ambiguous statement in the Bible where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. Nope, you will have to interpret it that way. And what y'all doing is y'all setting the stage right for the Antichrist. When he shows up, everybody's going to believe him. Why? Because y'all already believe a man is God. Y'all already believe Jesus is God. So when the false Christ shows up, you're going to go for it because y'all have set the stage. God doesn't associate anyone with him. In Isaiah 42, he tells you he doesn't share his glory. He says, I am God and there's none else beside me. He said, there's no God beside me. Okay, so you got to understand that Islam is only bringing the monotheism back to the believers, to Israel, to all those that seek God. Okay, because the Bible went from monotheism to polytheism. Now it's two gods in the New Testament. Some people believe in the Trinity. That's three gods. Okay, so Islam, what we're doing is bringing the monotheism back. Okay, other things I wanted to talk about. The last time, thus saith the Lord, is mentioned in the Bible is in Malachi 1.13. There's not one mention of thus saith the Lord in the entire New Testament. Okay, you know why? Because. God wasn't playing. God told Israel he was taking the scepter from them, that no more kings was going to rule in Judah. And it's been about 2,600 years since we had a king and he took the scepter of the prophethood and he gave it to a Gentile messenger. And he didn't put 5,000 prophets in there. Okay, he only put it in one man's hand, Solomon, the type and shadow of Solomon, Lemuel, the donkey. The Gentile messenger. He had one man, okay, do the job just like Moses, okay? So you are fooling yourself if you really think you're going to get away on the day of judgment, especially after hearing this message, that you need to repent and quit associating partners with God, and you need to stop lying on God and saying that he put Jesus' name in Isaiah 53 when it's not. If you was to go to Google right now and type in, who is Isaiah 53 speaking of? It will say the nation of Israel as a whole. So how is that pretty clear? That's not pretty clear. What about everybody's salvation? Okay? What about everybody? Everybody is not witches. OK, we're not looking through every scripture and trying to find all these different meanings out of it for something that we don't have no foundation on. OK, you have no foundation. You have no legs to stand on. If you don't have a scripture coming from the first lawgiver, which is Moses speaking about Jesus dying on the cross. And what I love about the Quran, okay, it says all they have is assumption. Now, that's true prophecy. You talking about the Ishmaelites don't have prophecy. And you say the Quran don't have prophecy. You sound like a fool. We have true prophecy. You show me a thus saith the Lord. I'm going to send Jesus to die for your sins in the Old Testament, in Hebrew. I want it written in Hebrew. Don't give me no stuff in Latin. Don't give me that second Ezra chapter seven stuff. I want it written in Hebrew in the language of God where he's saying, thus saith the Lord, I'm going to send my son to die for your sins. Okay, show me that. Because when I read the Bible, God is against justifying the wicked. God doesn't want the wicked to get away. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day God is angry with the wicked. 
You really think he's going to let you slide with another man paying for your sins? You a damn fool if you believe that. You've been hoodwinked. Every man is going to be accountable for their own sins. Ain't nobody hanging on a cross for you. Ain't nobody else paying your price. Man up. Man up. Now I understand who are the real men. I understand who are the real women. Because those who know they got to face judgment, they ain't playing with this. Those who aren't sincere, those who are cowardly, they are the one looking for a shield. They are the one looking for someone to hide behind and ride the coattail of. Okay? Come home with your shield or on your shield. It's war out here. And you can't hide behind nobody. You can't have nobody as your armor bearer. You're going to have to face God directly. Directly, you are going to have to face him. So, going on. Oh, yeah, y'all got me tonight. I am doing a special. I'm doing a special. This is going to be 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12. And Asa, in the 39th and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease, he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Now that's a heartbreak for God. For God to put that in the scripture, that's heartbreaking. God is letting you know that there's stories in the Bible that the Bible character would do something and sometimes God did not inspire them to do it. Okay? He didn't seek the Lord. He didn't seek the Lord and God put that there to show you that man sometimes goes by his own intuition. He goes by his own understanding. Okay. He leans on his own understanding and don't trust in the Lord. I got another scripture for you. This is going to be Joshua 9 14. And the men took of their victuals. And ask not the counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Now, this is when Joshua and the people of Israel were being deceived by their next door neighbors. Their next door neighbors lied and said they came from a far country when they was right next door. But you know what Joshua, Joshua, you know what he didn't do? He didn't seek the Lord. He didn't ask God. Are these people real? He didn't. And what happened? They found out that they was next door neighbors and they couldn't kill them because they made a league of peace with them. All right. And your boy saw he ended up killing them. And God had to take seven of his sons to hang them to get that famine out the land. Let me tell you something. There's a famine in the land. And that famine is coming from your boy Paul. It's coming from the teachings from the house of Benjamin, the tribe of the ravening wolf. There's a famine. There's a shortage on the bread because we have false teaching running prevalent, running rapid all across the globe. Okay. And in the house of David, we are tipping over that idol every day. So, Show me a scripture in the Old Testament, in Hebrew, preferably. And I've extended it to the New Testament. If you can find a scripture where it says, thus saith the Lord, Jesus is going to die for your sins, I will become a believer today. Okay? I will join your church, whoever show me. But I know you're not going to find it in there. Okay? Because I've been studying this thing. And I don't see it. Because God is against human sacrifice. Moses was against human sacrifice. Let's get back to Moses. Let's get back to Moses. This is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 18. Of the rock that begat thee. Now, Paul said that he begot you. Paul said that he begot you. Let's get that. Yeah, yeah, let's get that. This is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 
For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. And now he putting Jesus in it. He's using Jesus as a shield. He's using Jesus as a mediator. Okay. He said that he begot you through Jesus. That's what this whole mess is all about. Paul using Jesus as a shield, calling him king. But really, he is the author and he is the Lord of this whole movement because Jesus Christ is going to say, look, I have nothing to do with you. You have associated me with God and I bear witness against you. Allah, they are your servants. Do whatever you want to do with them. If you have mercy on them, have mercy on them. But if you want to destroy them, you destroy them. According to the Quran, Jesus is going to be a witness against the people of the book and the Christians who believed in him before his death. Okay? Those who crucified him before he even died, Jesus is going to witness against you. Going back to Deuteronomy, God says, I begot you. God is the father. That's why in the Quran, Muhammad is not the father. And even in the book of Matthew, Jesus said, call no man your father. Muhammad and Jesus both was in agreement that you are to call no man your father. Okay, the two brothers, Jesus and Muhammad, you can find Jesus in the Quran and you can find Muhammad in the Bible. Peace and blessings be upon them. This is the book of Deuteronomy 32, 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. What were they doing? They were sacrificing their children. Why would God condemn you for sacrificing your children if he's sacrificing his? Are you saying God is a hypocrite that he tells us not to sacrifice our children, but he sacrifices his? No, Moses is against you. Moses is not with you. Deuteronomy 32, 37, and he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? Now, to this day, Christians call Jesus the rock. They worship him as God. And let me tell you something. Jesus is going to forsake you in that day. When you associate him with the most high, Jesus is going to witness against you. Deuteronomy 32, 38 which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink. Oh, the bread is the body of Jesus and the wine is his blood. I'm going to read that again with that in mind. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Key words. Let them rise up and help you. And be your protection. Moses was against human sacrifice. He was against human sacrifice. He is not in agreement with Jesus being crucified. There's no scripture like that in the whole Torah. Not once. Okay. So I want to tell you that God loves Jesus. God loves him so much. He didn't let him die. OK, and I encourage you to restudy the scriptures, restudy the scriptures. These Israelite camps fail just like the Christians. They believe in that garbage that Jesus died for their sins. All right. So that's what I have for you tonight. I got all these comments. Not one person even sent a message to set up a discussion and a debate. All these comments. See, Christians, they all mouth service. 
And most of the time, they ain't have no good scriptures. They was just running their mouth, making my page look dirty, okay? With their witchcraft, polluting it. Don't even have enough good character about themselves to text me all this nasty stuff they saying about what I believe, okay? And not one person set up any debate, not one discussion. But they love Jesus so much. They love his people so much. Okay. That's it. That's all I have for y'all. Y'all have a blessed night. Restudy your Bible. And I'll holler at you. Shalom and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters.